Hello. We are going to talk about some chemical reactions and some important information about what happens with chemical reactions. So chemical reactions are basically what happens when you have a chemical change. Substance will change into do new things, new um, substances will form and the old substances will no longer be um, around. So when we talk about chemical reactions, we write them in um, almost an equation-like format. Um, the difference here is that we have an arrow instead of an equal sign. The arrow is called a yield sign. It tells us what is um, going to be yielded or made from the reaction. This also divides the chemical reaction into two sides, a left side and a right side. The left side is what we start with. These are the things that will react. They are called reactants. So we have to have reactants in order to make um, something new. These are kind of like if you're um, following a recipe, um, these would be your ingredients. Okay, on the right side, this is what is being made. This is the new substance. This is what is produced from the reactants. So the name of what is made is called the products. They are what is produced and it is what you end with when it comes to um, a chemical reaction. Now, when there is a chemical change, we're going to see some um, indicators that a chemical change has made. And the first one is a temperature change. So when the temperature changes, we have a chemical change occurring. Um, there are two types of chemical changes. There is exothermic. This means that heat is released. So think of a fire. A fire is an exothermic chemical change it is releasing heat. And then endothermic, it absorbs heat. So it's gonna feel cold to the touch. Things like ice packs or ice melting, these are all considered endothermic. When you have a formation of a gas, um, mixing acetic acid and sodium bicarbonate. Now, you might not be familiar with the words acetic acid and sodium bicarbonate but maybe you are more familiar with vinegar and baking soda. So when you mix vinegar and baking soda, it fizzes and bubbles up. That bubbling is the formation of a gas indicating a chemical change. Uh, the next indicator is a change in color. So if you think about it, if you've ever peeled an apple, uh, what happens to the apple after it's peeled? You're gonna start seeing some brown residue um, starting to form on the outside of the apple. That is a chemical change happening. It's the oxygen in the air reacting with the apple itself. A change in odor is an indicator of a chemical change. Um, a change in odor, think of souring milk or rotting food. Um, that is going to indicate a chemical change. It means that the actual um, substances are breaking down and they release this odor. And then finally, a precipitate. A precipitate is a solid that forms when you mix two liquids. So with a precipitate, you're gonna see a solid come out of virtually two liquids being mixed together. The other thing we need to talk about when we're talking about chemical changes is this thing called conservation of mass. Now, Mass is conserved. Mass is the amount of matter that something has, and matter has a mass and takes up space. So the law of conservation of mass states that mass is neither created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction, it's conserved. That means we can't take the things we start with and make them magically disappear. And the things that are created aren't created out of thin air. They have to have things to be made from. So what we start with, we have to end with. So the law of conservation of mass simply states that whatever the total mass is of your reactants, you will have the same mass for your products. Now we can apply this to actual 
mathematical calculation. So in this problem, you have an experiment. You take 10.00 grams of red mercury to oxide powder. You place it into an open flask and you heat it until it is converted to liquid mercury and oxygen gas. The liquid mercury has a mass of 9.26 grams. What is the mass of oxygen formed in the reaction? So the first thing you need to do is pull out the information that you know. What we know here is that we know the mass of our mercury two oxide is 10.00 grams. We also know that the mass of our liquid mercury is 9.26 grams. What are we being asked to find? Well, we're being asked to find the mass of oxygen that's made. Using the law of conservation of mass, we know that the mass of the reactants will equal the mass of products. Our reactant is a mercury two oxide. It's what we put in the flask and we heat. From that, we make liquid mercury and oxygen gas. So we know what our reactants are. We know what our products are. This mass of mercury two oxide must equal the mass of the liquid mercury and oxygen gas combined. So here we have mass of the mercury two oxide equaling the mass of the liquid mercury plus the mass of the oxygen gas. We can now plug in our numbers up here. We know the mass of the mercury two oxide we know the mass of the liquid mercury. We don't know the mass of oxygen. So by subtracting the 9.26 from the 10, we find that the mass of our oxygen would be 0.74 grams. That, that ends our video. It's the only four slides we're gonna cover. So please make sure you've taken notes on these and we will practice some of these problems in class. See you soon.